Hey there, I'm Lindsay Zarniak. Welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. So it's time once again to check in with some of your favorite drivers to hear how they're doing behind the scenes as they wait to get back on the racetrack. Today, I'm talking to Bubba Wallace, one of the more opinionated, entertaining personalities in the sport. He joins me from his home in North Carolina. Bubba Wallace, thank you so much for joining me. It's really great to see you. Um, where are you right now? Uh, I'm at home uh, following quarantine orders. Uh, I'm actually upstairs. Uh, Amanda's working. So I figured she would not like me talking. It's usually just like when I wake up, every time I walk into the kitchen where she is, she's always on a phone call okay. and she gives me a look. So, you know, what? I just like, you know, I'm going to social distance ourselves and have my own time, have my own meeting. What kind of meetings does she have? I don't know. She works at Bank of America. Uh, she okay. tries to explain to me, everybody asks what she does. And I'm like, I don't know, but she sounds really hot when she tries to explain it. So there you go. That's what I say. <laughs> what kind of impact has this quarantine had on you? It's, it's been tough. I mean, now granted, I'm not a person that is out of the house every day during the week and, and doing stuff, but I get bored here when I'm not traveling. You're on that, when you're off that routine uh, of, of leaving Thursday morning or Thursday night to uh, get on the plane. And then you got Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the racetrack. And so, you know, that first couple of weeks, it was like, okay, it's kind of like the off season. And now it's been a month and some change now. It's like, okay, this, we've just got off our off season. You know, we usually get 10 months to where we can enjoy not having that little bit of a break, but it's, uh, it's definitely taking some time. I've gotten really good at video games and we've worked on some photography stuff, but uh, all in all, we're bored. So Bubba, now that we know when we'll go back racing, how, what kinds of changes are you expecting to have to deal with? Yeah, well, from the rumors and kind of what we're hearing is very limited testing and practice time, uh, mm -hmm. way limited to what it was before, like showing up and just going to race. So with it, uh, with zero practice. Yeah, just show up and hop in the car. So I told, uh, I said, that's kind of like the biggest hold my beer moment. Watch this when we go out, <laughs> or better yet, hold my Coke and watch this. So, uh, it's, it's going to be challenging, but we're, it's props off to props to NASCAR for trying to do everything they can to get a full season in, not only for the drivers, but for the fans. I know fans, uh, potentially may not be able to join for any yeah. sporting event for a little bit. So it's, uh, it's going to be cool to see. How do you feel about that racing with no fans? Yeah. So I thought about that. Um, actually last night laying in bed, um, and <laughs> You know, our, our sport is once we get into the race car, that's all we hear. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of all we see. Everything's at a blur. But it's those moments like when you have tantrums on pit road, you hear the crowd just erupt or you hear the crowd erupt when their favorite driver wins, Chase Elliott, the people's champ when he wins. <laughs> uh, you know, it's those no moments. No grudges right held. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so say, say Chase wins. Um, whenever we talk back, it's going to be like, crickets i think that's going to be kind of weird to grasp is when we climb out of the cars and and then you look and it's like oh there's no fans that's it's going to be super weird to see that we just ran 400 500 miles whatever it is and there's no one there to see it but everybody's watching on tv i'm sure tv will be there covering it all so it's it's going to be bizarre uh i also thought about there was a driver I was talking to who talked about the routine, you know, leading up to the race. I think it was Chase, who Chase Elliott, who was talking about all the obligations you guys have. Those are all things that keep the sport running. But if you can't do them, I wonder if right. organizing time differently is going to share any interesting perspective. So our routine, when we get to the racetrack, uh, say it's a three day show, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday is usually just practice with maybe one or two interviews, whatever. Saturday's qualifying, not much going on, you know, go in and, and relax. And then Sunday, depending on where we're at in the track, I've had some pretty hectic schedules leading up to the drive to the race. And, you know, sometimes that takes a toll on you, but through time it becomes a routine and you kind of expect it. Now, if uh, Courtney, my PR person is watching this, she's going to be like, oh, it's routine. You should be used to it by now. But no, um, it's, you know, it's going to be weird for sure. It's going to be different um, just showing up and not like walking out to a meet and greet or going to a sponsor appearance 
you know, it's just going to be literally like how it was when we started out. I remember in go-karts, you know, it was, you know, practice, qualify all and, and race all in the same day. But you were just sitting in the trailer until your class was called over the intercom to be like, all right, five minutes to grid. And we're running up there, strapping in and rolling off. So that, that's kind of, it's going back to when we all started, you know, no meet and greets, no nothing, just had a little bit of family there, but now no family at all. It's just going to be us, a uh, limited amount of crew uh, I'm hearing. So it's, it's going to be uh, definitely different. So the run, what you brung is going to kind of be like, Hey, hold my beer. What you said. Yes. Right. I hold my Coke. There you go. Perfect. You're getting it down. <laughs> I think it's definitely going to be strange for the drivers to be at the racetrack without any fans. The good news is Fox Sports will be there to bring you all that racing action. Coming up, Bubba and I discuss his complicated relationship with social media. Stay with us. Welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. Bubba Wallace has always been very open with his fans, both about the highs and the lows of his journey. It was really interesting to hear his take on that complex relationship. He also has a really complex relationship with iRacing. He filled me in on where that stands now. So Bubba, real quick, back to the iRacing. Do you think that there are parts of it that are helping you keep your mind sharp at all? And I guess my other question is, how do you describe your relationship with it now? Yeah, iRacing, I've always thought, you know, highly of iRacing and what it's brought to the table. Um, now, is it, you know, a little bit superficial for some people like to grab their minds around that? Then it's like, okay, come on, we're, you can hit the wall at 200 miles an hour and hit reset and get back going. That's like number one take from it. You know, Jeff Gordon mentioned that on the broadcast. He was like, now I'm glad I got in a wreck and hit reset button and got back going. It's like, okay, we cannot do that, you know? It's totally different. So you've got to be careful on how far and how serious we take this and, and compare it to the real thing because iRacing is the best simulation video game out there. I, I do want to, you know, back that up for sure. Um, but there is a, there's a line that, that needs to be put to where it's like, it's still a video game. Your girlfriend, Amanda, has been pretty funny on the commentary. Do you think she has a future in any sort of analyst work? <laughs> that came about randomly. She was like, really? uh, she was like, what she, I think she, she was like, Hey, I'm, what do you think we should, you know, commentate, uh, from your, from your Instagram page? I'm like, okay, sure. Go ahead. And, uh, she took off with it. So obviously I have my headset on and I'm racing and I'm getting yelled at, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so I, I, we have to go back and watch it after the race is over with. And, you know, she's on there talking crap about me not wearing socks, how goofy I look, my tongue's hanging out, my mouth's wide open. Do I look like this when I'm sleeping? Whatever. Uh, yeah. She's just dragging on me. You know, people love that we gave a little insight of, of how we mess around with each other. We are very sarcastic and, and like to, you know, build each other up, but also keep each other humble. I think that's so important. You got to stay grounded. Um, yeah, absolutely. And you're a guy who... I, I admire how open and honest you are with the fans. You show them the good, you show them, you know, the bad or what you perceive as the bad. Why do you feel that's so important? It's one of those deals of where I've always been like that. And I guess you can, you know, give that to my parents. We've always, you know, kind of wore, wore our hearts on our sleeves and that's how I was kind of raised. But I've always just been a straight up 100% honest guy. And it's bit me in the butt a, a, a lot of times. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, I can go to bed, lay my head down saying like, shame me for being honest. I wanted to get your take on, on the situation that happened with Kyle Larson and on the, the communication you had with him, because when that happened, you, you tweeted shortly thereafter. Um, obviously now we know that he's been fired for using the racial slur during the iRacing. Do you, were there things that you took away from your conversation with him after the fact that were um, important to you? You know, it's a very unfortunate time for not only Larson, uh, I, I immediately thought of his family, his kids, uh, you know, the race team, the whole sport, you know, it, it, it was a, a major setback for, for us. And it was, it was really frustrating um, to, to kind of hear that and, and, and be a part of it indirectly, you know. Um, I, I was just, I don't even know what I was doing. I think I was playing Call of Duty or something, and and uh, I had seen it pop up on social media channels, and 
And, uh, and I was like, Oh no, you know, it was tough, but you know, Larson reached out, you know, immediately after minutes, minutes after, and I, I didn't answer and I didn't know what to say at that time. So, uh, it took me, I would say almost, tw almost 24 hours to kind of come up with something to think about and, and whatnot to, to be able to communicate with him. And, you know, when he called, you just hearing his voice, it was like, man, he is not in a, in a good spot. And, 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 you know, it, he, he brought it upon himself and it, it's tough. It's, I hate it for him, but I told him, you know, it's, it's, it's got to get out of your vocabulary. I mean, it was, it was, it was really tough. And, and I'm not trying to throw Larson on the bus. I, I always thought he was a great guy. We were super competitive. We, we raced hard back in the K and N days. We had a little grudge match back then. And, and ever since then, we've always been, you know, really fierce competitors on the racetrack when we had those opportunities. So, you know, you have this setback and, you know, I, I, I wished him nothing but the best. So um, it's a, it's a long road ahead of him, but also for our sport to kind of rebound from that. But I think, you know, we, we can, we can all learn from this and, and try to make a big impact on the sport. So, and you said it yourself, sometimes the fans in your past have been hard on you just in various points of your career. Sometimes they've been super supportive. What has your experience really been like? Yeah. You know, ever since, you know, I come out about depression, uh, last year, um, you know, fans, fans, it's, it's funny, like the keyboard words is what we call them. You have a thousand, a thousand fans that support you. And then you have that one fan that will throw out whatever they want because they can, because they're not an ambassador. They're not representing anything but themselves. They, they can say that one thing and that lashes onto you. And then you're like, well, I wonder what other bad stuff you're reading. And so you just kind of scroll for the negative and that's kind of like, yeah, where you, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Um, but Lord knows, you know, I do one thing, it's kind of blown up magnified. So it's, <laughs> it's tough. It's, it's very tough. It's a crime to, to, uh, to not participate in high racing races. It's a, it's a, it's illegal in today's world. So got to be careful with that. <laughs> I'm getting sweaty and frustrated thinking okay. about it. All so right, let's all right. Move we'll have you think about something else before we move on. Uh, getting the King's um, autograph tattooed on your body. Can you just explain mm. to me how that really went down? Yeah. So we were sitting at Victory Junction. I love going up there. Yeah. Spending time with kids. And um, if you've never been, you definitely need to check that out. It's it's incredible. Um, we were sitting there and we were putting on uh, pit stop shows for the kids. And I was sitting there waiting on the go or the next prompt to do whatever. And I was sitting over with my arm on the, sh on the, on the window. And I was looking out the other side and I feel somebody writing on me. And I was like, okay, it's the King. And he looked and he signed it. And I was like, you know, this would be pretty funny. And I had seen, who was it? I think it was Ryan Truex had posted something like he'll shave his head or something for like, 400,000 likes or retweets or something. And I'm like, that's a, a huge number. Like, let's make it realistic. So, you know, I was like, okay. In my head, I'm thinking, this is exactly what I said in my head. I said, in 24 hours, I bet we can't get 43,000 retweets in 24 hours. Okay. Tweet it out. And I did not put in the 24 hours. And so, if we want to look at the statistics, it was, in 24 hours, it was only 39,000. So I was right in my head. And so I was like, well, you know, they didn't get it. And then you had Clint Boyer chime in. Oh, no, you can't, you can't, you know, back down in your bed. And so I'm like, all right, you know, I'll get it somewhere, you know, where you can't see it. And, um, and it's funny, at multiple times, I've kind of forgotten about it. Until like, say, I get into the shower or something, Amanda's like, sweet tat, bro. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. But <laughs> Only the only reason I went through it and I was, I was seriously going to be like, I'm not getting that tattoo, but you know what I mean? I'm going to work. I have, I got a tattoo on my arm here for, for my grandmother and I have been wanting that it's praying hands oh, that's beautiful. She loves playing cards and mm. it has a card sticking yeah. out of her hands. So I was, I've been wanting that for a couple of years and, and, um, I, I always needed significant meaning and we lost my, my grandmother back in 2016. Um, and so I was like, you know what, that's kind of a, a starting point. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to tie it all in. I'm going to get a, get this tattoo for my grandmother. And then the signature will be an added bonus. So uh, I have forgotten about it until Amanda reminds me, but I have, I, I like getting massages. 
And so when they're like, hey, turn over, I just start laughing. I'm just dying on the inside because it's like, it just says Richard Petty. And I'm like, oh, well. I love Bubba's tattoo story. And the fact that he got one at the same time to commemorate his grandmother makes it, in my opinion, even that much sweeter. Coming up, Bubba's gonna share how he got interested in photography and also why skydiving onto the front stretch at Daytona may just be easier than entering through the tunnel. Who knew? Welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. So on a given race weekend, you can find Bubba Wallace on pit road during a truck or Xfinity race, but he's not behind the wheel, he's behind the lens. I wanted to find out how his photography hobby started and what moments he likes capturing most. So Bubba, I know you said that, you know, this isn't as exciting as your normal life, having all this extra time, but I know also you have a lot of hobbies, right? You play the drums, uh, the photography. I want to hear more about the photography. How did you get into that? Uh, I started photography back in um, 2010. We were at a, uh, a test session when I was with Revolution Racing, uh, Rev Racing. I was, I'm, I'm old school. Um, Rev Racing. and. Um, and Greenville Pickens, uh, a fun racetrack. I ran a couple times there in late models. Okay. And I was kind of coming up through the ranks. And uh, my dad had his old Nikon in the uh, in the back seat of his of his truck, and I grabbed it. And like that was 2010. Maybe that camera was from 05. I don't wow. know. Wow. But I was like, all right, I'm gonna figure it out. I didn't really know what I was doing. And then later on that year, we went to Bristol. Uh, for something it was obviously it was cup weekend um but i went and bought a camera and uh it's, it's been a lot of fun it's, it's super challenging i kind of went on a little bit of a hiatus there a couple years ago and it's kind of sparked back up to where you know like i, I want to travel and 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 like after i'm done racing and you know hopefully make a good living for myself just travel the the world and and take really cool pictures i'm trying to get into portrait photography now that's totally different because trying to tell somebody like oh yeah you look great smile here be serious like i'm i'm usually on the lens side of that mm -hmm. where i'm being mm -hmm. told that during photo shoots and stuff and and it's always funny because i am eyeballing their equipment i'm looking at oh that's a nice lens that's 70 to 200 uh oh that's 1635 like all right nice and then i'm like oh i'm sorry what did you want me to do you want me to smile here okay I'm, my bad I love that. Um, okay, we're gonna play a quick game, fact or fiction. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Entering Daytona from the air is easier than through the tunnel. Uh, it's easier through the air, but also a lot more sketchy. Why? <laughs> uh, that's the first time jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, and it's uh, definitely easier to go through the air because you don't have the guards asking, hey, show me the hard card. Now that right. I'm gonna call the cops, I'm gonna get thrown out. I just kind of fly right in, no hard card needed. Uh, your first sponsor was your dad, fact or fiction? Fact. Yeah, my dad, uh, we have our own our own family owned business, yep. uh, industrial cleaning, and that's still going on to this day. Uh, and my mom built that up uh, from the ground and, and uh, they were able to support financially uh, my sister on the basketball courts and me at the racetrack. So that was a family owned sponsor and on the race cars until about from 03, 02, 03 to 09. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. You throw a football better than Corey LaJoy. That is fiction. He throws a really good football. He's got an arm. He's got an arm. So I've been working on my game. Amanda and I have been practicing a lot uh, in the driveway. If the sun's out and whatever, and she gets a break from work, we'll go out and throw the football for a little bit. All right, your sister gave you your nickname, Fact or Fiction. Fact, Bubba, from the day I was born. Yep. Really? How? Mm -hmm. What was her, what, how did it happen? She just. I, I don't know, I was I was too young to remember. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just happened. Spiders are your favorite insect. That's a uh, fiction for sure. No, don't like. I am terrified of spiders. Really, my thing is bees. I have a problem. Oh, um, yeah. Jeff Gordon was your favorite driver growing up. I love Jeff. Jeff <laughs> is a handful, but fiction. I was a Dale Earnhardt fan. Dale Earnhardt fan. So, uh, it was. Uh, it, I was a Earnhardt from from senior to junior, 
And so that was kind of been my, that was my childhood. And then obviously getting to race against uh, those guys. Factor fiction, roll tide is your favorite greeting. Fiction. <laughs> I, I'm a big Go Vols fan, okay? Yep. Go Vols, Tennessee Vols fan. But I am roll tide over War Eagle. 10 4 there. And Bubba, maybe now that we know that, that we will be back racing, you know, is there something that you have that you would like to share with your fans? No, I think, obviously, I wish everybody would, uh, is staying safe and, and practicing social distancing and, and all the, the protocols that we need to follow. Uh, obviously we're struggling, all of us together as a group are struggling through these, these times. It's unfortunate that we're going through this. Um, but knowing that, you know, through every storm is an amazing sunset after that. And so you have to remember that and, and be, and be positive. You know, I struggle with being positive all the time. Um, but the more you practice it, the better off you'll be. Um, but I appreciate the support. Dale Jr. sent me a, a message after I crashed out in qualifying at uh, Martinsville. He said, uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do. So got to remember that. That is awesome. Cool message. Thank yeah. you, Bubba. It's really great to no talk problem. to you. It's even better to be able to hear your stories. And, and thank you for sharing so much of your time. Absolutely. Y'all have a, a great day. Appreciate it. Well, one thing we know, Bubba Wallace is always going to be honest about the way he feels. And it's refreshing to hear that, you know, this hasn't all been easy for him sitting at home. We know that a lot of you feel just the same way. But the good news is Bubba is going to be back at the racetrack very soon. And things seem to be taking a positive turn for all of us. Until we get back on track, I'm going to continue having conversations like these with different NASCAR drivers each night, checking in behind the scenes to see how they're spending this time. You can see it on Race Hub at 6 p.m. I'm Lindsay Zarniak. Thanks for watching.